So we are Alevo, we are based in Bucharest, Romania. We are celebrating 20 years of age this year. So we're quite a mature business that has grown organically. And we've been serving um, banks and other types of financial institutions from the very beginning, helping them automate their payment flows and achieve integration between their core banking systems and external market infrastructure. So that's our main focus. We very recently enrolled a new strategy that's fresh out of the oven last year and it defines us as a very customer intimate business and that means we work very closely with our customers to understand what issues they actually have and what problems they also want us to solve and, and that provides us with a lot of insights that allows us to develop our applications to provide not only compliance to their requirements but also solve other issues. Last year, for example, I've noticed a lot of talk on stage about cryptocurrencies and um, uh, blockchain uh, technology and applicability to, of that in financial services. A lot of talk behind the scenes about ICOs that was not exactly on stage. This year I have seen a bit of shift towards um, more focus on AI, on artificial intelligence, and uh, how can we best use the benefits of these types of technologies in financial services and how, on the other hand, do we protect ourselves from the bad things they bring with them, cyber attacks and data privacy and all that type of uh, collateral damage. So Alevo's solution for PSD2 compliance enables a bank to do a number of things. First is obviously offering compliance to the PSD2 regulation and that is it manages, manages requests coming from payment initiation and account aggregation service providers on behalf of uh, the final customer and processing all this type of uh, communication between the data the bank has and is allowed to share with its third-party providers and them. Uh, it then allows a bank as a next step to authorize itself as a PISP or a, an AISP and offer more value to the customer. And it allows a bank, more importantly, I think, to pursue the bank as a marketplace model where the bank itself and third-party developers can bring apps into the API store and thus have um, a diversification of products that they offer to people to become more relevant. And I think a solution that enables that, such as ours, is uh, what they should be looking at. And lastly, they also bring the merchant ecosystem closer and back to a point of trust, which is the bank. One thing that is very different is that we work very closely with our customers to, uh, and started early last year, early 2017, to see how they perceive this regulation and what they want to do with it. And what we found is that they all have understood what the regulation said. They all have been part of the conversation and know, they knew all the implications that it had, but they had no idea how to go ahead and implement. And collecting this feedback from our banks, our customers, we were able to come back with them by mid next year uh, with a um, demo of this is how we think you should start to go ahead with it. And while doing that, we took into account not only their feedback, but insight on the technologies they were already using in-house, such as for strong customer authentication, for example, we wanted to be as dis less disruptive as possible when bringing in a new architecture. So we wanted to reuse the bits and pieces that were um, already available with the banks. And now we are very happy that we moved even further and we are running two proofs of concepts with two very important local banks that I hope to be able to announce very soon. 
There has been a lot of talk about fintechs that will replace banks and obviously no, not everyone believes that truly. The, the truth is I think that the need for payments to be solved has been cracked by a lot of fintechs. So people have the need for payments to be cheap, very fast, cross-border, with very small exchange rates, with very small fees and banks have not done that yet. But then again, fintechs have not managed to do all that just on their own. So they are using the bank rails, the bank infrastructures, and the network of banks to be um, able to achieve this level of seamlessness. So I think we will see a lot of regulation that will target these fintech players to bring a level playing field in the industry and more collaboration and more partnerships between banks and fintechs to work together to actually give me something that I actually need as a user of their services.